Alrighty, started that recording and starting that stream. Welcome, folks, to Game Maker Monday. We are back in the thick of it with our AC130 game called Project Overlord. And uh, we have been grappling with our uh vehicle ai for about a month at this point a month's worth of uh sessions anyways and um really you know we've tried a lot of different options and they're all uh you know they they work to some degree but they are all busted in one way or another so i'm getting a little insano mode uh about doing that over and over again slamming my head against that wall so i am saying today we are going to try and tackle some other objectives in our design documents um particularly i wanted to come back around to the game states obviously you need basic series of the game states to move through based on a player input so, you know, main menu that would take you to one of our levels, and then beating one of our levels would take you to another level, uh, and then once it reaches the end, you would get a game over screen. Um, and then that could take you back to the start menu and, and rinse and repeat that. I want to know how to start building a little bit of a uh, UI, you know, a little bit of some, some stuff like that, and, and fill the spaces between levels with something um so i think that is what i'm going to look into um today but first i should do what i forgot to do and advertise our stream for today um, Send it. And send it somewhere else. Bada bing, bada boom. Free post. Post. Posters. Post posts. Do do. But yeah. See if that uh gets anywhere today. Just get, you know, given, you gotta, especially with a project like this where, you know, I'm working on my own schedule, um, someone's becoming too much of a brick wall, just gotta work on something else. Uh, ba -ba 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 -ba, put it all tags, game five, game dev, coding. Post and send it. Okay. Post in all the usual places. Uh, I was listening to the new 100 Gex album. Maybe I'll go back to that. Let's see. Oh no. Oh no, I finished it, right. Me, me. Definitely, this is the finisher, but it's probably my favorite from the from the album. It's either that or like the or Dumbest Girl Alive. That the first, the opener is pretty fucking good. Doritos and Fritos also good. Hollywood Baby. the The opening trio tracks on this album is pretty good. Uh, okay. So, oh, this was some. I got a new response on my mesh fracturing question for buildings, but. Uh, I think that one's still, this one, the, having the buildings explode when they, uh, are destroyed is kind of more of a, a flair, nice, you know, nice to have rather than a must have, so, um, I think I'll put that off for later in development. Mm. Build 
building game states in Unreal Engine 5. Alright. Set up the Twitch overlay stuff on the side here. Uh, okay. D mode, game state, Unreal Engine documentation. Looked at this before. I don't know if this is exactly what we're looking for. The main class which handle information about the game being played. D mode and game state. Even the most open ended game has an underpinning of rules. These rules make up the game mode. Base level, these rules include. Running. Building. How about we get more precision? Building a main menu in Unreal Engine. Great main menu. There we go. Script a main menu for your game. That's what we're looking for. Devouring these fucking fry plantains. Too good. Same project. Okay, let's go back a step then. Basic in game HUD elements and a front end menu using Unreal Motion Graphics UI Designer. Uh -huh. Energy bars, not what we need. But... Ammo and flare. We might, we might use ammo. I'm still up in the air about that. They didn't have those in Call of Duty, but maybe we can put that in our game. If it feels good. Working off of blueprint, blueprint first person, user interface, widget blueprint, and HUD. Alright. Oh, we're still playing this. Oops. E. Let's see. Add user interface. What was it? A widget blueprint, yep. Okay. We can go in our blueprint folder. Alrighty. What else we can play today? What else we got in here? Guilty Gear Classic. Green Feeling. Anything in the release regard that I have not listened to lately? For me, why is there a Halo track? Or is that no? That's probably just because Monty's put out something. Excuse me. All right, let's see what we got in here. Oh yeah, this is Martin O'Donnell song. Bud. All user interface elements, HUD menus, etc., will be created and housed inside a widget blueprint. The widget blueprint allows you to visually lay out your UI elements as well as provides scripted functionality for those elements. We are creating this now so that we can tell it to be displayed when our player character spawns in the world. However, we will set it up later. Widget blueprint documentation. Pull that up on the side. Two more widget blueprints one called main menu and one called pause menu. We're not even at that step. What are we what are we doing here? Visual widgets. User widget is extensible by users through the widget blueprint. Uh 
sure. We'll just do the main menu. Uh, main menu. A minute long track from Marty. Thank you. I have Gambino feature here. Is it that one? Pause menu. Yeah, that would be pretty good to have. Okay. Okay, yep, uh, they make a level. We already have two levels, so that's fine. We will use this later in the guide for our main menu setup. Okay. Content browser. Uh, sure, I'll make a new level. It's called main. Where did I put here? Content. Maps. There we go. Level main. In the content browser, open the first person character blueprint located under yeah, add variable. Name it health. Change it to float. Okay, this is for the HUD. So we can skip this for now. Although, actually, okay, let's do all of it. I will I will make a HUD blueprint and it'll be we'll, we'll make something we'll we'll make an ammo counter. Just just so we can follow along with this thing. Have something that the HUD UI can track on the screen. to code that into our gunship. But we can that out. That certainly was a Gambino song. Yes. <clears throat> oh, fuck yeah. It's a new sevenfold album? Or this was a single? Nah, this was a single. Can't wait. Can't wait for the next Black Ops to, to give me more Avenged Sevenfold Zombies tunes. Alright. Uh, so, in here, they're asking us to make a health variable, right? Yeah. I mean, I guess the ship does have a health variable by virtue of being a target, so we do have something like that. It will represent the character's health displayed on the HUD. Of energy. Energy, yeah, I'm gonna really sip over that. Ammo. Yep, that's what we want here. Uh, you got your spline component, you got the camera, viewfinder, fire projectile.
factor zoomed in. Those don't need to be public, but this one does. I'm gonna make an ammo property. Make it edit anywhere. Blueprint read right so that we can fuck with it in the blueprint and also count it game called gameplay category. Uh, do, 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 do. Just make it int. Um, ammo equals one. We'll actually here, we'll code in some functionality for it. Uh, size of uh. Belt fed magazine or main weapon. Uh, da, 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 da. We'll do uh, current ammo and max ammo. How about that? Some weird ass horns in this song. Max ammo. We're gonna have multiple weapons down the line, so this is gonna need to probably get turned into a, an array or something. But for now, we'll just have it be one weapon with one magazine size, and yeah. Right, let's get current ammo equals max ammo. Current. Health inherited from target, uh, current ammo, and max ammo for the ammo on this gunship. Great. Mm. And then the CTP will say. Da, 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 da. Where's fire? There we go. So it's firing. We should probably restructure this so we're not nesting too many if statements here. So what we should do instead is this out of here. This here. Say if no projectile class then log on successful firing. No projectile. An error, and then we say else if 
current ammo equals zero, then we say return return also log our bad attempt saying in orange. This is by Naoki, but I've noticed it might not be Naoki. It might be one of the other artists that contributed to the Guilty Gear soundtrack, but they've got a very peculiar situation on Spotify where two artists share the same namespace and whoever came later just decided to work under the same artist, like ID in the Spotify system. So I don't know if this is actually Naoki or somebody else who's called Naoki and then publishing the music on Spotify on the same ID as the Naoki who's worked on Guilty Gear. It might be the real Naoki, though. That sounds fine. Uh, okay. So we got red, orange, yellow, firing. Then it does all this work. Will spawn actor. Okay. This should, this should be like this. This should else. No world. Ship not in active world. I should really never fire, but just in case. Drop this down out of one more nesting. It should only really go at the end. Okay. Uh. <clears throat> Sorry, this is just setup work to go back to the tutorial with, but as we go along, you know, looking looking back at the old code never hurts to try and spruce things up a little bit, clean it up. Uh, okay, so this is spawning in the world, so we should also have a check to see if it doesn't exist. Thank you, Hefe. 
Appreciate it. Ugh. If. Direct out muzzle. Go to the message directory. Yes. Log says firing at the very end. Okay. Now we have. Oh, we want to uh, decrement current ammo. No more car. No car this week. I'm taking a break from the car. I I've slammed my head against that wall for like. A month, so I just need to, I just I for my own mental well being I need to do something else. Uh current ammo minus minus and then <laughs> Thank you. The O the O seven salute current ammo Hey, let me hop in the cave. There we go. So if it runs out of ammo, I'm just gonna put it on like an on an auto reload system. Um, so load. Ammo less than one, then we will create a new function that is called reloads the main weapon magazine. Well, that's cute. You can set up a little date in chat. On in pool. Alright. Reload. Reload. And let us create a definition. Okay. Now it's a question of how do we make it take a break? Uh, I got like timers, right? Let me set up a timer. Timer. Gameplay timers. There we go. Setting in clearing timers. Set timer functions of F-Time Manager will set a timer to call a function or delegate after a delay. It can be set to repeat that function indefinitely. These functions will fill out a timer handle, which can be used to pause and resume the countdown query or change the amount of time remaining, or even cancel the timer altogether. It's safe to set timers within a function called by a timer. Even including reuse of the timer handle is used to call the function. One use for this might be to delay initialization one actor if it depends on another actor that hasn't spawned yet but is expected to spawn soon. Then an actor's initialization function could set a timer to call itself again after a fixed length of time, such as one second. Alternatively, the initialization could be called by looping 
by a looping timer that includes itself upon success. Okay. All timers associated with this big auction are completed by a clear all timers for object. All repeating function once per second, starting two seconds from now. Timer with a rate less than or equal to zero is identical to calling clear timer. Uh. Member timer handle. Okay, so I have to make an F timer handle. Actually, the, the handle's not going to maybe have changed. Um, really, should just be as an int. Um, all this int reload time equals two. two. for our reload timer managed by world's timer manager. Right? Is that how that works? Get world time manager. Yep. <clears throat> Timer. Set timer. So in here. Uh, load max mag. Okay, so we say to get world timer manager. Right, and then we do that and we'll do set timer okay uh in out handle reload timer in rate in be loop first delay Any generic delegate I do not understand. Call a repeating function once per second, starting two seconds from now. Okay, that's the initial delay. <coughs> uh it's it's going for the month. We do we do know different different charities each each month, Brad. This uh reload. Can I click on that? Alright. 
Alrighty. Sounds good. Let's get rid of the signature. No. There we go. And a gunship. Oh yeah. This is the opening track from uh one ten thousand gex or whatever it is. Nice. Hey! Thank you, Roman Koala, for the follow. Appreciate it. Do you know CSS? Uh, yeah, I am aware of it. It's been a while since I've done web design, but yes. Alright, uh, reload. There we go. What am I missing here? Very, very new and have an issue in my code I'm not sure how to fix. Okay. I'm curious. Can't guarantee I'll have the answer for you, but... You've piqued my interest. I... How... How, how much of a hand do you need? <laughs> Again, I could... I could put... I could ponder a possible solution, but I'm... I'm probably not gonna crack open my my own CSS projects out right out here while I'm trying to trying to figure out my own shitstorm of a, a time here with game dev. Mr. Dante time, that's me. Professor Dante. So why 1.0 F? Uh <laughs> Uh, if you've got a GitHub that it's, that it's uploaded to, I could just look at the, the GitHub repo. Um, I'm, I'm not, I'm not gonna just take emails, though. Repeating function. Or timer handle. Yeah, if it's if it's on some website publicly available, that'd probably be the easiest way to take a look at it. Your timer handle, yeah, I know that this actor once per second. So that's what the 1.0 is supposed to be. I don't need it to repeat. I just need it to fire. Pausing the zooming timer is the timer active. Code's not thread safe at the moment. Very cool. Okay, let me look up F Timer Manager in the documentation. No, nah, no worries, man. I mean, if you just describe generally, like if it's a design issue, uh. I can I can try and piece it together, but um, yeah, I just it I'm trying to think of like what CSS errors are really common from from my history of working with it. The center so ah yeah okay um, centering is always annoying. It it feels like it you should be able to do it one way, but you have to finagle it with it. Um, I I guess I would I would the the top of my head suggestion would be to look into, uh, something called the the flexbox, um, the the flexbox design system that's in like HTML five and CSS three, um, and just see if if implementing if I think I think it's literally just use the keyword flex. Um, and then some other work can, can get you more centered. But I, I, I definitely remember having issues with centering text during my, my early days with CSS. Um, you know, if I want, I could, let's see, I can go to my, my personal portfolio website and see if I have... Uh, yeah, I have I have my title centered here. Let's see. Content. Okay. 
How did I center this? Console. Memory. Where is it? CSS. Adding text align. Uh. Display flex for all of them. Uh, maybe. So here's what. So here's here's my portfolio website it has the the text centered in this block, and the CSS applied to it is uh, it's got some padding for the top and bottom, uh, but it's got text aligned set the center, and then the margins are autoed. I think that is another thing that might help you out, um, or it auto margins the the sides. Um, but text align center should theoretically do it, but I know I, I have definitely had problems with that in the past as well. Um, yeah, text align center, flex, and I, I guess I'm also getting some stuff inherited from, I'm using a bootstrap to, uh, boilerplate, like the, a lot of CSS stuff on the side for these columns and whatever. Um, so the, yeah, I might be using the flex as well with the zero zero position relative with 100 padding right order box yeah I would look into the text align the margins and and then using flex yeah see if that see if that figures does something different for you uh all right f timer manager unreal E5. Sure. As long as it's not the porn or something. Oh, no. That's your that's your local address. I'm not gonna be able to read that. Yeah, no, that's that's that is what you run locally to to see your website in like a development space. You're basically just running, uh, like one of your local ports on your machine to to s just be testing your code. Um, so that's not gonna work outside of your computer. Okay. Set timer. In I don't know what in right is, bro. What does that mean? No worries. You're learning. As am I. For me, I am just trying to figure out how to set a timer that executes something when it ends. Uh, this is a curse song. Next, please. Oh, <gasps> good kid! Automatic like. Yeah, it it probably is really simple. I'm just not understanding the terminology. Timer end commands. Yeah, like a callback. That's what I'm trying to see. I think set timer... Because it, it's, you know, you have the handle, and then I'm telling it to run this reload function, but I don't know if... The, the way the tutorial describes it is weird, where it says, call repeating function once per second, starting two seconds from now. So, set timer using the handle, so it just has like a unique name. On this object, call the repeating function every second. But I don't want to call a function every second, I just want it to fire when this timer ends. Uh, oh, that, okay, no, actually, I think it's, I think this true variable might be, uh, what's throwing me off. The true is, I think, what sets it to be repeating. Let me see. Uh, reload time. Yeah. Oh, yeah, the bool in B loop. Yeah, so I just don't set that, and then it's fine. And then I don't have a delay either. So, load max mag if out of ammo. Yep. Current ammo is less than one. Get world timer manager, set timer. Uh, give it the unique handle. Act on this object. Gunship. Call the reload function. And then reload timer. Reload just sets current ammo equal to 
Max ammo. Easy. Okay. Yep. Current area equals zero. Then the gun won't fire. But if we got past that, then it'll fire projectile. And then it'll decrement, decrement the current ammo. Yeah. Yeah, I think that the, this timer function that Unreal 5 has just does all that stuff with me, or for me, where it handles the if timer equals zero execute function. I think that's what all of this is, is set up to do, which is pretty neat. It just takes, takes care of it all for you, because there's going to be a lot of things in game design where you want a timer to execute something when it runs out, so they, they give you this function that does all that stuff for you. Uh, let's see if that works. Control Alt F11. I should have uh, code now that'll log out bad results if the gun is uh, reloading. All right. Yeah. Yep. Do have to submit navbar. Navbars are pretty cool. There is so much, like, nice functionality available with HTML5 and stuff. It's a powerful tool, to be sure. Okay. If I play... Yeah! There we go. And it's, like, roughly two seconds. Out of ammo, need to reload. Fire. Can't shoot. Can't shoot. Can't shoot. One Mississippi. Two Mississippi. One Mississippi. Two Mississippi. One Mississippi. Two Mississippi. Yep. All right. Cool. So it's working on the two-second timer now. Uh, you can if you you uh the button where it says donate. I think there is an option to switch it over to subscribe. But I would I would vouch that uh. If you if you would like to give some money to me, do consider perhaps just donating instead. I I have a full time job. This is this is still mostly a hobby for me, so um it I I would feel equally as supported if you if you were to donate to the to the cause that we are raising money for this month, which is the Ukrainian Freedom Fund, which uh, as it probably implies by itself is uh, supporting uh, efforts humanitarian and otherwise in in Ukraine. Uh, because things are kind of fucked there after a year of uh, this bullshit invasion. So, but whatever you want to do, it's your money. I pre I will appreciate it either way. Um, so, let's see. Alright, so we have all that. That was Diatribe because we wanted to make a UI. Alright, character's energy, and we have ammo, default value of 25. One more integer variable called max ammo. Yes, okay, we've done, we've done all this stuff. All right, and then you right click, break link branch, and uh, drag the left main group new nodes, link steps. This is like the event begin play, so we can add our new functionality. Select the event begin play node and drag it to the left to make room for the new nodes we'll be creating in the next steps. So is this inside of? Oh no, this is a side. Okay, so the so they're gonna do all of this character stuff in blueprints, but I'm doing it in C plus plus. So I'm just going to have to translate what they're writing about in blueprints to uh into the C plus plus counterparts, which is for the most part pretty straightforward. Uh, in the uh, select the event begin play node and drag to the left to make room for the new nodes we will be creating the next steps. Drag off the event begin play and add a create widget node with class set to your HUD widget blueprint. Okay. How do we do that in C++? Hmm. That is our conundrum now. A 
we have a begin play function right here. So if we just create oh. Thank you, virus detection. Create HUD widget. Is it just that easy? No, of course not. Um, UE5 CPP create HUD widget. UMG widgets with C++ and Unreal Engine 5. Okay, maybe this is what we're doing. But if it is available in... Okay, no, it's just a video. Oh, oh boy. With the, with the GIFs? Incredible. Back up. <laughs> HUD is the heads up display, yep. So yeah, user widget, a simple purpose component that you can attach to various locations on the HUD as well as the viewport. Okay, so this is the individual items that get put into the HUD. Crosshair health bar, yep. Widget animation, user widget components responsible for handling animation for all the various components added to the user widget. Okay. Manipulation of states like transformation, visibility, kill, opacity. Okay, yep. Custom, oh, it is a custom HUD. Okay, we don't really want to make a custom HUD. Because we have one. We have, a, we have our blueprint HUD that we're working with from the tutorial. Although, I guess if I wanted to, I could just turn that into a C++ class. Native construct. Ride. Uh, object initializer. Need construct. All right, this is probably a little bit more than what we need. C widget. <clears throat> oh, does this have it? I'm gonna give it a C plus plus. I'm doing a bit of this. I can give. C subclass of U user widget widget instance. Great, like so. Create widget. Uh, is that what we're looking for? Create widget. No. Maybe there's something that character has by default that I do not have in my gunship class. Hmm. Cursor parts. When you're done, don't forget to reset the input and go back to the game. Hide the cursor and the widget. The widgets in C. Uh, is it? Let's see. Yes. There is a whole new Tully. There's a new Owl Time Low album. Let's listen to it. I can fuck with some. Some all time low. 13 songs. Okay. I meant to UMG to get rid of the C plus plus four on the slate. Help, yes. <laughs> huh? 
L to the yes, the new all-time low album. <laughs> it's here. It is here, finally. <laughs> Like, is it a programming language? It's a GUI framework. I think it's better to use UMG for the design part. The main reason for introducing UMG is probably to let the GUI designer focus on the layout and hiding the implementation. Yeah. Understandable. What are the headers to access you using widget? Runtime UMG public UMG.h and slate.h. UMG slate and slate core. I don't this might be out of date though. That might be what this guy was talking about. Right? How when was this post made? Uh August of fucking 2016. Okay. First you create a widget that extends the user widget. To override the name power. Is is a HUD the same thing as a widget? Standing. I guess so. Widget blueprint, right? Line. Create a HUD widget. <laughs> yeah, I really just wish these names and blueprint were one to one with the C plus plus counterparts, mm. but they are often not. So it makes that is. Not great. <laughs> sourcing what they're actually called on the back end. Very annoying. Oh, points I have to mute so I can focus on my code. Ah, you're fine, man. Just tune. Thanks for tuning in. So I'll create our HUD widget blueprint when the game is started. Okay. So, okay, no, but it is a, it's still just a widget blueprint. I don't know why it's called create HUD widget. Add a create widget node with class at the HUD. Oh, maybe it's oh maybe in Blueprint it just auto renames the thing because it's creating class HUD widget. Okay, so let's create widget a thing. Oh wait, there was something. F slate widget class registration persistent state. Widgets. The same thing. Much better. Support many more libraries. Oh, you text block to display on the screen. No blueprint widget or any reference. To blueprint widget is allowed in here. If you can answer it, from the native construct, player controller class create and display the widget. User interface equals create widget. Yeah, how do you get that code though? I don't have that. Wait, what, what do I need to include? New user widgets. It's in the docs. Include user widgets. for blueprints and C++. Sure. Let's see how that goes. Hi guys, Mike here. In this video, we are going to have a look at how to... Two times to speed! ...and how to add it to the default in C++. So let's get started. In the editor, before we have a look at how we created in C++, let's first have a look at how we would do this in blueprints. So, in our game mode, let's use the game mode for that. In our blueprint play, we would, let's say, create a widget. Mm -hmm. Open it up. 
select our DP text widget. Then what we will do is the multi key variable, call this as a text widget, and then then add the viewport. Compile. The only value you can usually do you get the player controller, but you can leave it also empty. So this is how you would do this usually. And let's test this. So in our level, we have the world that we can override our game mode, select the DP game mode, hit play, and our text box is visible. Our user widget was shown there. So let's stop this. Either let's disconnect this and now head over to Secret Base. So let's go to our game mode base. And from last time, let's create this thing here. And what we're going to need, and it's still there from last time, the widget class that we defined is the DP underscore. Okay. Text widget in the game mode. So we need this to create the actual widget. And then we need another view property to make it visible instance only so that we only see it once the game is running. So we give it a category of runtime. And then what we need is for the declared and say view text widget. This is the class that we created, this one here, view text widget. And we call it text widget. This is the variable. <coughs> oh. oh boy. Just got all that spice back up in my throat. Fuck. Why'd I do that? Why'd I do that? Oh boy. Okay. That we need once the widget is created, that we My prayers to the Unity gods go unanswered. <laughs> and then they'll... Yeah! Yeah! <laughs> that is... that is a constant in this world, it seems. Can I... so... If, do I have... Let's see... Is there a gunship? Mm. We use our widget. Okay, we do have access to that already. Player controller generated dot h. Okay. Assuming that's what we're gonna use to create. The last part that we need to do is create the override for begin play. So we usually do this by virtual begin play override and implement function over here. And now that we created this, let's first do some checks. It's really important when you're using the subclass of or reference to classes that you're checking if this class is valid. So what we are doing here now is we type the if widget class or if is valid widget class only then are we going to create our widget and we're going to do this by saying text widget equals and then there is a function called create widget and this is you can see here it's declared in the header user widget h so mm. okay that's what i'm looking for include user widget dot h writer like me you need to include this file here blueprint slash user widget h and then you can create the widget create widget has several possibilities like the, with the owner that we've seen in blueprints to get player controller or we can just say get world and the widget class okay how do we now we don't but now I am going to have to translate this all to C++, because I don't know how to get the blueprint. Oh, I can just make it a variable, and then set it right. Which is what he did, right? Yeah, widget class. Okay. So, let's do that. Reorganize all these variables at some point. Code widget. Code property. Where have 
Mass types. Edit anywhere. Equals UI. And subconsciously. Hard widget. No. What do you mean? You didn't text widget. Ah, okay. But it's not a text widget. Hmm. Oh, it's casting it? Okay. We don't want to do that, do we? No, we can just make it a user widget, I guess. Let's add to viewport node. Let's see if we do a search and we're going to actual HUD drive away from character players. Change. Okay, we have that with the gun. The gun changes ammo. On projectile. Yada. A widget blueprint. And why? Why is the video talking about? Oh, because it's casting it. Yeah, okay. Create widget. What if I just do that directly? What if I just say, uh, create widget, this, comma, HUD widget. And HUD. And you add it to add it for okay. Dot add New user widget doesn't have. Okay. Now we can compile. 
access functionality of it. So what you can do is you type in div text widget. What you make it more readable? You say not equals null pointer. That's more readable. And then you can say text widget dot add to viewport, and that's it. So now we can compile. And what's compiled is over to alt editor. And back in alt editor, we see we have disconnected improvement version. And if we are playing, then we see a text block that's the plus version one. So this is how you create widgets and add them to the viewport. We place it into or saved it into a variable so that you can access it later if you have custom functions in there, want to access other things from the game mode. So it's usually a good practice. Hold widget text widget. We need to what is text widget? It's a blueprint widget, functional widget, which is created that we need to set it like we promoted. View text widget. Okay, what if I just have Uh, da, 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 da. Blueprint widget. Oh. <sighs> widget blueprint. No, that's not it. What is new user widget? The widget is extensible by users through the widget blueprint. Okay, yeah. I'm gonna just that still works because it's like the same thing. Then can I? Does hub widget have add? Okay, so yes, a U user widget has add to viewport. Uh, do we need to create it if we just have it set here? User widget, hub widget. Hmm. Just fail now. It's so weird. And this fails to build? Just comment this for now. See if that makes any difference when we run it. Okay, it's added to the viewport. Creator HUD widget blueprint when the game is started and stored as a variable. See, I don't think we need to create it then if we have it. Launched it in there. Well, maybe we do. I don't know. Drawing it off screen. Okay. Displaying energy health and ammo. In your HUD widget blueprint, access the widget blueprint editor. Set the palette under panel. Drag a horizontal box on the canvas. What are we doing this for? Under panel, drag two vertical boxes on the horizontal box. On the box. Set both the progress bars. Fill for the size. Okay, let's just follow along. BP HUD. Oh, I just. 
move this. There we go. Horizontal box, drag it in there. Drag a horizontal box onto the canvas panel hierarchy window. Yes, that's what I did. Horizontal box. Oh, just put it under there. Oh, okay, there we go. Common. I'll put two verticals under that. Okay. Oops. Common. Two text widgets. First vertical blocks and two progress bars in the second. Alright, so we're just making a grid layout right now. Uh, text. Progress bar. There. And then set the progress bars to fill, right? Fill. Fill. Make the horizontal box, and then in the graph, resize box and position in the upper left corner of the window. Okay, where is the upper left corner? How do I move it? Okay, not in that. There's like, I, I, you guys probably can't see this on the stream, but there are tracers, or they're little like divots notating grid position, but I think it's already at zero. Yeah, it's already at zero, zero. I also just don't even know how to move it, even if I wanted to. Dash outlines. Zoom to fit. No. I don't think I need to do that. Let's just assume it's in the corner already. And then this, we say fill. Set this to fill. There we go. The bars line up with the text. You got it. Seems very small. Anything? Two text widgets. Second one vertical. Hmm. Of 
that's lined up at the very least. Next content to health. It's on ammo, since we're not going to do energy. There we go. Uh, by you and default UMG text window, we would just use font that shifts with Unreal Real Engine. Gives you something to work with out of the box and get started quickly. I mean, this built-in font has some limitations. Only supports a small set of languages. Uh-oh. Especially those that require you as non-English text. You want to import your own custom fonts. Okay. Set the health progress bar to a green color. You're crazy. Uh, what are we doing? What is this? Appearance, fill, color, and opacity. Click the health progress bar next to health and then the details panel. Style, fill image, appearance. There we go. Sure. Set it to green for now, I guess. Does not change color when assigning a color. This is because the percent value to fill the bar is set to 0, 0.0. Color to the energy. You select an orange color. I will do that for ammo. Okay. Yeah, okay, we're just doing that, but on the other side. Oh, but they're doing a... Interesting, they're doing a text block. Okay, actually, let me do that. They just added text blocks, right? Here's how we do that. We take a horizontal box, put it inside the vertical box. Bada bing, bada boom. Now inside the horizontal box, we say that it should fill. I think it does. Fill, yep, okay, it does fill. So then we set a lot of text boxes inside there. Uh, text. There's our health and ammo. Ooh. Not perfect, but that's good. Put the anchors. The right anchor. This will move the anchor medallion to the upper right corner of your screen. Very interesting. Oh, I, I, I still don't know. Like you, I can't drag it. Alright, whatever. 
script, health, energy, and ammo. Now that we have our visual layout, we can add the hooks to provide the functionality behind our HUD elements. Ooh, I grab my big construct, dude. Okay. Switch over to this. Player character node. It's upon the player controller at the specified player index. Turn value cast to gunship. Event constructs. I got as first group here, except the promoted variable. Oh, okay. Player gunship. Designer tab, select the progress bar next to health. Oh, okay. Back to the designer. She just uh not big, so it's still off. Oh. Oh. Hello. 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 Was lumping. Lib. Hello. Hello. How's it going? What's gaming? What's gaming, gamer? What kind of gaming is it today? It's a, you have a it's what? Game design, game. Not the game design, game. <laughs> <laughs> we have magical. I'm setting. vibing. Build the with game. The new all time play. low. Details panel under progress. Click the bind option next to percent. Percent. There we go. Bind. Player gunship. To. Where is the health? Oh, do I need to get it? No, it should have health inherited. Unless health isn't public. Is health not public? Uh, target. Acceleration limit, hostile. <laughs> the fuck? Edit anywhere. Blueprint, read, write. Category equals target. Yeah. So it should be accessible, as, as should the ammo. Current ammo. Edit anywhere. Blueprint, read, write. Category equals gameplay. Yeah. So this should be in here why is it not here it creates a new function on the widget blueprint that will return the binding data for this property what the fuck okay what if i go Get health. Okay, you're able to get the health. How about the current 
ammo. We're able to get that too. So why... Why does the designer not see it? Hmm. Also, why does this keep resizing? Oh, I wonder if it's because they're ints and not... Is there Ooh, that might be it. Yeah, because I haven't I have health as an integer and not uh not as a float. It's probably looking for a float. Yeah, these I think these are all floats. Alias for float double depending. Horizontal view of degrees. Yeah, these are all floats. So that's my problem. I understand why they only want floats for a progress bar, but could they consider taking an int instead? Would that be possible? I just realized I was muted, but I, I was thinking, I was like, why doesn't it just cast it? Yeah, right? I feel like that's the kind of thing that it should just cast on its own, considering it's not like you're adding any data, you're just... It can just become a float. <laughs> Well, I, I I can understand in the sense that if I'm bi like binding it is so it's like it's going to be tracking it, you know, as the game goes on. So I don't have to manage that, which is cool. But um, if it's an inch, like there's not it's it's just going to the progress progress bar is going to be full or empty. I assume I don't think it's trying to do. Uh, well, it might be. Yeah, I don't know. Because maybe it's trying to like only analyze a value that's like from a zero to one, but that doesn't make sense for a. Oh wait, this like, for a, a progress variable. bar? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Usually the, this is all Unity knowledge, but like they don't do. It's just it is just from zero to one usually. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, that that's actually pretty normal if it's a progress bar. It's like twenty five. Binding. Okay, I guess I could just manually create a binding. Click the 25 following the ammo text, and then the details panel for text, check, click bind and create binding. Now, like the way we previously used sub-object properties to bind properties of the same type, we can also create our own custom bindings. I'm going to bind our text property to an integer property. Oh, yeah, okay. Here, let me do a custom bind. Uh, create binding. Okay. Where are my variables? Gunship. Gunship. Health. And then just plug that in. And return it. And then it does conversion into a prince. Okay. Yeah. So it didn't. It didn't have the auto, like, brought up option because it wasn't a float. But I can just do it custom with this, so that works. Percent zero. Yeah. Okay. Uh then we do this. We go to content bind. Create binding. Uh gunship. Get it in here. And
There's, there's like an auto declutter hotkey in Unreal for blueprints. So I don't have to manually drag these out. I feel like there is. UE5 blueprint. Shortcut to declutter. Or maybe I'm, I might be thinking of the fucking Halo Infinite blueprint editor thing. Spawn in common nodes, bring connections in line, left shortcuts. Oh, I have to make my own binding. Okay. Possible to set two bindings. Personally, I only set one on the H key. Sure. Putting one on the H key. Uh, da, 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 da. Editor preferences. Straight. Pretend. Oh, it's Q. Okay, they have one bound by default. There we go. Except, no, we'll leave it too straight. So, put that there. Uh, okay, save, compile, designer. Text zero. Probably should rename those. Yep. Hit percent zero. Get healthy UI. Okay, so that's all there. Uh, duh, 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 duh. Yes. Don't that anymore. <sighs> Bind it. You probably don't need to do this in Max Ammo. It's going to remain the same. However, this will allow you to change it. Why does it keep expanding? Why does it do that? Is it the box? The box has a size that's... Behavior, accessibility, scale... Make this smaller. Does it stay small? I 
okay, why... What is happening here? Why does this keep getting bigger? Behavior. Tooltip. Enabled. Visibility. Render opacity. No. Accessibility. No. Transform. No. Clipping, navigation, localization, no. I can get this. Kings panel. Did I miss something? Hold on. Went to the canvas panel in the hierarchy window. There was no canvas panel. I need to bring in my own one. Okay, or is that just inside? You can apply during horizontal. Okay, no, it just it had one by default, but we did not. So let us rectify that. Maybe it can't have children. What do you mean? You have a child. It's called the horizontal box. Cut that out. There we go. There we go. Actually, that did save. Ah, okay. Now we have all the movement options and whatever. Cool. Fill. Make this a fill. Fill. Okay, now that's all funky dory. Cool. Text is still. What, its function bound to it, right? Yep. Okay. Move. Uh, oh yeah, that was a that was a good vibe, Dory. Good. I liked that. Album. That feels. That, I feel like this is the first full album that I'm like I like I like everything here. <laughs> I haven't listened to it in a while. Let's listen to this fucking DJ Hero. Let's see, another one bites the dust versus Duffolk. Yeah, there we go. Got these all from. I I own both of these games, so they're both the definitely legally acquired rips of these tracks from my legally owned copy of DJ Hero 1 and 2. Ugh. But I should have just... Very legal of you, them. good job. Thank you, thank you. Listen, they got bangers in these games, and they should have just released them publicly, but I don't think they ever will, so, you know. Gotta okay. preserve them yourself okay so that should be it right we did all the setup the only question is if it'll actually load in close this let us reload this we should add to viewport, yeah, control F11.
Fighter 51. Error missing. What? Missing star in expected. Oh. Okay. Does it need to be a pointer? I didn't think it was a pointer in this, was it? New widget. Oh no. It's old stuff. Oh, okay. Yeah, it is a pointer when they use it as a text widget. Alright. So. Oh, maybe that's why this was failing? Nope. Still doesn't like this. I guess I could use get world if that's what the guy used, right? Get world. Does that make you happy? No, it doesn't. Why does it make you happy? A subclass of widget class. Right, I'm going to try and mirror this as close as I can. Here he says, if is a valid widget class, if is valid widget class, Check that he does. It's casting. Um, if text widget. Eh, okay. Okay. 
that should be good to build. Right. Do 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 Okay. Successfully built. Awesome. Now uh, go to our gunship and say HUD HUD class VP HUD Ta -da. and then I launch hey ammo zero out of zero that's not correct why why does it not have the right amount of ammo, sir? What did I miss? Blueprint runtime error. Attempted to access missing property current ammo. This is a packaged or cooked build. Are you attempting to use an editor only property? Uh oh. Why? Hmm. Maybe if I make them edit anywheres? They are edit anywheres. Categories, gameplay, max ammo. I should I should be playing DJ Hero music more often. I forgot how good this shit is. <sighs> Why? Okay. Well, time to Google our errors. Do point one time error accessing. Variable. Room reference target phone room name print string. Edit anywhere blueprint read right. Yes, that is what I have. We have blueprint that inherits from this class, place in the scene. Third person blueprint. Try to display the room name like this. Uh, attempt to access a missing property. That is the error I'm getting, right? Yes. Why is that? I'm going to force a hot reload without restarting the editor. I can't restart it every time I want to recompile code. But it's still a bug. Oh, is this an... Okay, maybe if I close and reopen the editor, it'll get it. Well, let me just see if I close it and reopen it, then I'll fix it. The best solution. Yeah. It just works a lot of the time, you know? It broke again. Not real. Oh, 
know what I should probably do? I should go to BT Gun Show. Put this in here. Okay, continue. Oh yeah, first first projects are always gonna have those ups and downs. Tis natural. What is this? This is a no. This isn't even a blueprint gunship. Okay, that's the problem. All right, let's go back to second level. to a display so that I can click on it. Hmm. Is, is it like just not displaying at all when you're trying to just statically put it in your HTML or is it supposed to appear after doing something else and it's just not appearing when you do that action? There we go. One out of one. Okay. And now it's zero. And now it's one and zero. Okay, cool. We have a very generic UI system. Just can't get it to work. Understandable. Take a break. Come back to it later. That's what I'm doing with the uh, with my vehicles. I'm taking a break, and I will return to them at some point and give it another stab. Now displaying it all is meant to be constant. Uh, usually, uh, another great tool. For, for any kind of web design coding, is that like all of the modern browsers, like uh, Chrome, is what I've been using, and Firefox obviously as well. Um, you can go, you can just like right click anywhere on your pages and inspect element, and then it shows you all of your HTML, and then if you hover over the different section, like the lines of your HTML, it'll highlight like where on the page that's visually supposed to be displaying. So, if you have the HTML you think you should be seeing written into that file and then you just inspect element and then hover over it, it should show like a blue rectangle where the uh, where the element should be. And if it's what could be happening is something is causing it to auto resize itself to like nothing. Um, like your CSS could be squishing your your display down to like just be invisible or it could be off of the screen potentially um so i that's that's another great tool to to help debug that kind of stuff is is looking at the inspect element field okay so all right there we got you ui working now what we really wanted to figure out though was uh a main menu making a main menu Time manager stuff, not that. Turn the widget, okay, we're done. Get this stuff out of here. Um, save it. Next session, we'll create a main menu which we can use to load into our game that we've set up. Where's the next? Okay, finish step. Uh, see, creating a main menu. Yes. First bit of business is to create the layout of our main menu, which we will do below. We can do quick start, enter tab, drag and drop widgets from the palette onto the hierarchy to achieve the setup below. Starting with canvas, image, box, buttons. Okay. I will take care of that in just a moment, but I do need to use the restroom, so I will. Let's see what the next song is. Ace of Spades versus Groundhog. Another banger. All right, be right back.
Going with a canvas panel, a put this off to the side so I can just do it quickly. Oh, image of the box. Text block. Bouton. Two buttons. Two. Text and three buttons. I have text on our canvas panel. Yes. All right. Right click on. How's it going? Hey, Hello. Nando. It's going good. It's loud. Hold on. Let's see this volume. Box. All right, volume sounds better. Hello. Yeah, hello. New rip box. Right click, copy a button, and paste it to create a fourth button text widget. Okay. Sure. Oh. Hold on. Let me just. No, that's good. Vertical box, button, 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 yes. <sighs> Set the verse, vertical box, details panel, rename it to main menu. All right. What are you up to? Command bingo. I don't think you can call me that, but also, uh, how much? Um. Just doing some Go programming on the side. Ooh, what you making? Uh, learning it. Nice! Mm. Order set to one. We are naming the widget for clarity and setting it to a variable so we can access it, as well as setting the Z order so that it appears on top of our image, which we will set in a moment. And let the other vertical box dip in and move to options. Taking a break from my vehicle conundrums in Unreal right now and learning how to make some UI menus and stuff on the stream right now. I wonder how fat the paycheck was for Grandmaster Flash and all the other actual DJs to appear in this game. Hope they got a good payday. Rename all of these.
I've returned. Welcome back. Welcome back. Back with. Settings one, two, three. Two setting a three. the names of our buttons, we know which one does, this will make it easier to script functionality for them. Content is a separate field from name. Makes sense. I'm going to call this Project Overlord. There we go. Can't believe Dante is planning on taking over the world. What? Project Overlord? Is it your super villain plan? Yeah. Well, I mean, listen, you kind of. <laughs> okay. Real talk, I th this game is is based on this idea of of trying to make a project based on the like AC-130 gunship segments from like Call of Duty and stuff, um, mm -hmm. and so I've been looking into like you know where well uh, apparently they go back to like the Vietnam War was like when the first time we had uh what were they called shit um what's it call sign. EC-130 gunships. Spooky? Uh, Spooky is one of them. They, I guess they're just called AC-130s. Yeah, Spectres, Spooky, Stingers, or Ghost Riders. Um, Origins, uh, AC-40. Oh, C-130 Hercules. It was That was the non-combat version, and then they fucking stuck guns on it. And then that became the, the first Spooky. Um... So they've been around for a while. I was like, oh, that's interesting. Uh, but I've also been reading uh, a, not a biography, but sort of like a military documentation of the history of this one combat space in Afghanistan for over like a decade of our time occupying it. Uh, and like every time that an AC-130 shows up, war crimes happen. And it's it's fucking horrendous how how bad we fuck things up just time and time again. And there's like there there's like a discussion about how um the because the uh platoons were rotating in and out in like six month um you know, segments or whatever, like that's how long, you know, people were deployed for. Every time a new platoon leader and, and platoon would come in, they would have like different objectives for the region and so there was this one incident where the last guy was there for like a six to twelve month stint and he was like trying to uh establish like good relations and you know just try and you know build up a positive relationship with the with the locals and and just try to gain their trust that way and then the next guy that came in was just like i'm here to hunt terrorists we're gonna get them and then they proceed to uh fucking go on a botched mission that gets some of their own people killed and then also uh they misidentify insurgents uh or mis misidentify women and children as insurgents and ah, fucking blow them <laughs> off the it. map yeah so i've it's, it's given me a, a new perspective on this idea being that um these ships don't seem to get called in very often unless it's to eviscerate whatever they think they see off the map and then you find out a day later that that was not an enemy combat at all because you couldn't see shit i mean it, 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 the the visual look of technology has probably gotten better than what they the satellite imagery they had then but it's, it's definitely not a great look 
Turns out when you're very, very high in the sky with big ass cannons, mm -hmm. you cannot actually tell what the fuck you're looking at. Yeah, it's pretty crazy. You try to tell me you don't like the war crime machine? <laughs> no, I, you know, I'm getting a newfound uh, disdain, I guess, for the war crime machine. <laughs> <laughs> turns out, turns out the fucking somehow, you know, for for a game that initially set itself up as, uh, you know, war is cool, but also there's some fucked up things that happen in war. So we're gonna remind you with these funny little death quotes every time you die, but. They really were more, definitely more war glorifying than war uh, yeah. criticizing at the end of the day. Uh, and like uh, they got glory. lots of, yeah, and they, they get some lots of money, so I, I can't really deny the hustle. There's literally like an entire like movie industry of like, damn, look at this sick ass war shit. <laughs> Yes. I hate it when this is the sick-ass war shit. <laughs> Let's see. What is this called? <laughs> the names. In each of the text widgets shown below give the text. Play game. Play game. Name it all. Oops. Oh, interesting. All right, guys. Tomorrow's the day we find out if Trump is gonna actually be arrested, as he claimed. Really? Oh boy. Oh, did the DA for? No, no. I mean, he just. I don't think anything's actually been confirmed by anyone. It's just Trump was tweeting like, "This Tuesday, I'm gonna be arrested." So. Oh. Damn. I saw, I saw a post from some crazed maniac. I think it was on um, either on Twitter or on Truth Social. There. Mm -hmm. uh, he was like. We need to get enough Trump supporters that we can make an ant ring of death around Trump to make sure that no law enforcement officer can touch him. Oh my god. <laughs> like, what? An ant ring? <laughs> what the fuck? Have you, have you seen these um, ant ring of death? No. What? All right. So they look like... Here, I'll send you this picture real fast. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's see. So they look like this. And this is just what happens when, like, the um, ant pheromone trail that they follow ends up getting stuck in a circle like this. And these ants uh, like, walk, okay. walk in a circle until they die. Uh, Incredible. <laughs> so this Trump supporter was just like, we need to do this, but with Trump. What? That is possibly the worst thing you could try and pull an analogy to. Why would you? 
Like, the thing where they just mindlessly drone around until they die of starvation? What? Dude, yeah. a sea bear Listen. circle makes more sense. Listen, man. <laughs> they, they, I, I don't know if you know this, but the right loves to, like, self a werewolves on accident all the time. It's pretty funny. <laughs> Oh god. What a hell world we exist in, truly. Okay. 1920 by 1080. What do you think I am? Some plebeian? Mr. Mr. fucking Unreal Documentation? You think I'm gonna stop at 1920 by 1080? Cannot wait for him to get into 4K and then just be like, oh fuck, I can't understand widescreen. <laughs> Now I've been I've been pretty happy with 1440 if I'm being honest. I don't I don't think I really I I, ha, I think I my my living room TV is 4K, but like I don't even think because I don't have cable and so and then all the streaming services are 90% of the time not actually going to be uh you know pulling 4K imagery in in real time. Um, so like unless I start unless I upgrade my media PC to like start doing VR or something. And then, and then even if I do VR, I'm just going to have the headset on. So it doesn't even matter there. So I don't know. Really? We live in a society of coward. Yeah. I just, I mean, the bottom line is I need to get a, a, a 4k like Blu-ray player and then, you know, build, start building my physical media library. But I am now in no hurry to do that. Resolution. Yes, yes, yes. Watching the Titanic in 4K? I have not watched a Titanic. Ever? No, no. Wow. That's pretty impressive. That, yeah. <laughs> uh, there's, a, there, there's definitely a, a laundry list of popular movies, TM, that I have not seen or has been so long that I have basically forgotten them. Um... I don't know. I'll just, I'll just spend all of my retirement years vegetating and catching up on all of the media that I have missed over the course of my life. So that's the that's the retirement plan for me. All the all the TV, all the movies, all the video games, all the books, and then I just do that until I stop breathing. And maybe I'll do it in in interesting locales if I have the money to travel. But uh. Going to Bali to watch Titanic because you didn't watch it with your <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, exactly. <laughs> okay. Doing the text display in each of the buttons. Can we control select each of the buttons? Like the tint color or hovered. Each to fill for size. Okay. Ugliest yellow. Okay, and then set to fill. Okay. Each, set each to fill for size. Yeah. Why did it shrunk them like that? Oh boy, I get to use a custom background image. What shall I do? Uh, image. Your appearance brush image. Oh, do I have to import something? I probably have to import something. Texture sprite on material to use. And drop the example background. And then engine to import it. Oh, 
are we, what are we putting in as our placeholder main menu background icon? Let's see if we got anything good. Can't, it can't be too absurd because I have to put this on GitHub later. So, be too insane. Vin Diesel. No, no bitches. Uh. <laughs> it's fucking family guy. No. What do I have? I have an AC-130 icon somewhere, don't I? Yeah, I need to download one. Can't do that. Real quick. Alright, I'll download it from the Wikipedia page. It's under Creative Commons. Content miscellaneous. Gun ship. Very professional start menu screen. Okay. Details panel for image. Click the anchor. Where's anchor? Use the anchor button to choose the fill screen option. You can also use a scale box to hold the image, which will ensure that the image scales and resizes appropriately to match the aspect radio ratio. Oh yeah, let's do that. Uh, scale box. Oh, I did not. Slot, scale box slot, appearance, body, gunship. Also use a scale box to hold the image. We'll ensure the image scales and resizes appropriate to match the aspect radio. Yeah, that's what I... Or is this...
don't understand. Buttons, main menu, converter boxes, anchor them to the left center. Really? Oh, it's just changing their origin point, not okay. Yeah, that makes sense. Options visibility to hidden. Okay, this looks like hot garbage, but for functionality's sake, it will do the job. Font size alignment details, which is text widgets. Okay, mess with that later. What? The desired effect. Set up your options versus boxes. Desire to move directly behind your main menu versus the box. Alright, I'm gonna go grab some lunch. Good luck with the code. Thank you. See you around. You. Have you cracked the code? Uh, it's in the process of cracking, I think. I think. I mean, this is mostly visual stuff, so there's not actually a ton of coding happening right now. But you know what? It's pro. It's progress on something I've been meaning to knock out for a while. So we're doing good. Uh, online center. Actually, I could probably be a little nicer. Yeah. How oh, wacky. I'm studying for the LSAT and like these the puzzles in this like practice LSATs range from like super easy to just like how the fuck are you supposed to solve this? You're gonna be a lawyer? That's the plan. Oh yeah. and that's Someone's gotta come to Murky's defense when he says something wrong in the future. That was 
never happen. I've never said anything cringe in my life. Only base takes by Mercadante. <laughs> yep. Absolutely. I am an infallible person, actually. Anyone who disagrees with me is cringe. <laughs> See, see, I know I'm right because I put the 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 fucking buff wojack next to my statement and the cringe wojack next to your statement. I drew you as the soy jack and me as the chat. <laughs> this is modern debate. <laughs> Alrighty. That's what uh, courtroom arguments are gonna look like in a. Yes. Like well, it's gonna either look like that or it's gonna be all AI generated. <laughs> I wanna see two AI go at it. Oh my god. I, I don't think the accused would like that very much, but yeah, that'd be funny to funny to watch from an outsider's perspective. Oh god. I'll just watch it devolve into gibberish. Because they're they're all just large language model like substrates that just are like this is what the next word would most likely be given the previous set of words yeah but like assuming that they're both like built on like similar models they would come to the same conclusion you would think yeah it'd be interesting to see but like <sighs> yeah because like the the way people win court cases is like how well they know or how well they can they can argue that a law has a certain interpretation but like an ai won't know how to like how would they figure out how to try and best bend or, or not not necessarily bend but like interpret a law to suit what their client is looking for you know I'm sure they'd be better at like citing case law just because they have the entire internet at their disposal mm -hmm. like always where yeah. the lawyers have to actually spend the time like being like, oh, okay, here's a case that's relevant to what I'm arguing. Mm -hmm. Thank you for the follow, Satrak. Appreciate it. Um, but I do. Re I I just brought that up because I remembered that was like something that people were trying to. <sighs> somebody, somebody was trying to get an AI to, as like a defender for some like, you know, fine case or something. Some some civic. Uh, or uh, whatever you call it, the, like traffic fine court, um, sure. and like the judge was like, "No, fuck you! Don't make a mockery of this court." And they're like, "Come on, please, this will be good, and it'll let people." The the saddest part to me is the part where they're like, "Listen, this will make it so that people who couldn't afford like a regular lawyer could afford this AI instead." But I'm like, you know, you know, if this thing ever takes off. People are going to monetize the shit out of it, and then there are going to be tiers of how good the AI is that you can pay for at different rates. So then it's just recreating the original problem, because we live in a fucking hellscape. Yeah, that's one of the major problems with our legal system, is that just money is everything. Mm-hmm. It's, uh, it's a little fucked up. It's a, just a little bit. More than a little bit fucked up. <laughs> Okay, the overlap, visual, except it's actually just fun functionality. Okay. Your hands dirty and script the functionality of our main menu. It's almost certainly a way for me to do this in C, but for my menus, I'm just gonna say, mm, fuck it. Okay, so we go to the graph. And. Click the play button, and then you just gotta click the plus sign next to on clicks. Add node, add on click events for each of your buttons. Okay. So now we're just implementing all of our on-click functionality. Beautiful.
on clicked flip button load the firing range. Firing range. The level name is where you want to indicate. Hey! Yes, indeed! Fucking fixed it? Hell yeah! That's what we love to see! Godspeed. What was it? What ended up being the problem, Koala? If you don't mind sharing with the class, indicate the name of the level you want to load. It'll remove the target widget blueprint from the viewport. Okay, so this just removes the main menu. Good. I'm I am options. also going to bounce for now, but you have fun with your coding problem. Yee! See you around, Lib. Have a good one. Bye. Set visibility. Uh, just fiddled around for nearly two hours. Yeah, you know that that is also how it sometimes it turns out. <laughs> and sometimes that's just what your brain needs to be like. All right, we're good. We are. We no longer need to worry about this. New menu. So we make our main menu invisible, and then we set visibility for our options menu. Yeah. Oh, it's options menu, right? Or did I call it just options? I did. Okay. I'd love to hear that for you. We are here for people solving their coding conundrums. Uh, okay. Execute console command. Set is six. Oh, wait. Set wrong button. It's still a console command. Okay. And the command is quit. Wow. That's crazy. Copy this. Main menu visible again. We make the options menu invisible. Set res. Six forty four B. Two. for a school project or are you just learning learn CSS on your own for the fun of it it's your koala
compile and save. Yes, sir. Open level main. Uh. Okay. It's a void. Where are we going? Open level blueprint. Create BP main menu widget. And then add to the port. Events no. That show, there we go. Set it to true. And save. Okay. Following the event give place for add a get player control add set input mode game only mode. I think this is getting done automatically with the auto possess. We'll see. We'll find out. This will turn off the cursor and set the input for the player to game only. Hmm. Connect the out pin of set input mode game only. The branch node. Oh, okay, now we're, okay, so if we can pull this back up here. So what they want us to do is, we we translated the HUD character widget and add to viewport to C++. So building off of that, they want us to say, uh, set the input mode, game only, on the character, in our case, the gunship. Um, and then connect the out pin of set input game mode to a branch, pile and close the blueprint. Uh, oh, we don't have this branch now, so that's, I think that's outside of preview. So maybe there's a way to set this though. Pile and close blueprint, the local world settings. Under game mode, set the game mode override to first person game mode and change the default pawn class to character. Okay. We have a version of this for Overlord. We have an Overlord game mode, and our default pawn class is the uh, gunship, I believe. If I, if I check it out here. Oh, it's in project settings? Oh no. World settings, game mode.
are no go game modes assigned for the levels, but they were sh I swear there's a game mode assigned. There has to be. Yeah, I think it's in the project settings. Maps and modes. Yes. BP Overlord Game Mode Base. Fire Range is the default map. Position map, no. Okay. Should be BP Gunship. Controller class by controller, game state base, player state class. Okay. That seems right. Uh, so what else could be missing from the animation? Let's see if there's something like that. Set input mode. Gunship. It's from begin play, right? This seems like it'd be a world setting, the input mode. It's not. Okay. Well, let's just cut it out for now and see if it'll figure itself out with the auto possessing. Very well, might just handle itself. Quick rebuild. How's it going? Uh, good. I think if I don't need any other things to do here, I think I got the main menu working. Let's see. Open level. It's just there's just nothing in here. All right, let's play. Okay. No, it has health and ammo for some reason. All right, what if I play a game? Reload. Stop working, that's good. Come on. Let me hit the targets, please. Ah! No. God, the angle is just too low to hit. new level and we've got the health and ammo. The ammo updates when there is no ammo. Okay, cool. That works for the most part. I don't know why. Why does the health and ammo appear? But it does go to the other levels and then it works there, so that seems fine. Oh, maybe. What if I go back to project settings? Not that. No default pawn. There we go. Now we need to play game. Should level one should still auto possess. Ah! Come on, come on, just 
just hit it, just hit it, just freaking hit it. There you go. There we go. Yep, yeah, and it brought it back here. Okay, it was having the default pawn that was fucking it up. All right, great. So that all works without issue. Uh, yep, yep, yep. That's all good. Now what you're main menu is functional. Allows the player to quit the game, change resolutions, or play the game. Look up the specified level and transitions the player into gameplay. That it does! Okay. Yeah, if I... Options. Set it on really shitty quality. Sure. I can't tell if it actually lets us change the resolution. Does it look shittier? Kind of. I, I could not honestly tell you if this is worse or not, but... Okay, and then if I hit quit... It quits the game! Alright. Now, for the last part of this series... We wanted to make a pause menu, right? Which I assume to be similar to the main menu. It's just going to need to be a custom input. I assume escape and then. Uh, Pulls out of there. Okay. Cleveland, further reading. Creating a pause menu. Creating another canvas. Prints. BP. Pause menu. Canvas. Pull this off the side again just to read this faster. This song. I do not recognize this remix. Robot Rock versus All Nafish. The Soul. Interesting. V box and buttons. V box text and buttons. Border, vertical box, text, and two buttons each with text. That's the border, so it fills the entire dotted window, filling the screen. Oh, size the content. No. Uh, can I size to parent? That's not an option. Ah, here we go. Okay. Back from the last tutorial. Uh, interesting that it's got a white background right now. Oh, brush color. We make that. There we go. Let's we'll change the color from the brush color option size details. Let's put this at a forty five. Put it a nice shade of orange here. Just because I like orange. Just 
Let's resume. Quit button. Output of 0.5, 40, 5. Border, yes, fill screen. We get that. So we sure the border fills the screen regardless of screen size. The vertical box and hierarchy and the details are both horizontally and vertically. Pause menu, quit, and resume. Did those already? File hovered. With the visual set, next we will have to provide the scripted functionality of our pause menu. Click the graph button in the upper right corner. Okay. On clicked. On clicked. I'm assuming this is going to be... Ooh, where the song goes. Nice, nice baby versus straight up. Sure, why not? Let's be here. Okay. Right. Mm, but does this I can remove? Player to view on it from before. Let's just see. Set view paused. Ah, here we go. Create a new function called remove HUD.
function and a get player character. Cap to gunship. Huh. Not able to find gunship anymore. Why was it able to find it? Wait, it was... Hmm. Okay, this is gonna. Uh, the HUD was able to do it though, right? Well, your gunship. Is that because they brought in a variable? Cast to gunship. Get player pawn. Ah! Because we're not. We don't have a player character, we have a player. Uh, we have a pawn, not a character. There we go. Has gunship. Hood. Okay, it knows the ammo reference. Why not the HUD? Capital HUD? Uh, what is it called? HUD class and HUD widget. The AFK detector is too strong. I'm playing game, but with controller, so it's like, must be AFK. Mm -hmm. Sorry, bro. You're not active enough. Get the fucking boot. Truly, we live in a society. <laughs> of all the societies in the world, this is one of them. Oh, is it? I think this is the problem. This is visible instance only. I need to look up what the fucking keywords are for you properties. Unreal 5. View property keywords. Property specifiers. Here we go. Advanced display. The property will be placed in the advanced drop down section of any panel where it appears. Asset registry. Blueprint assignable. Blueprint authority only. Blueprint read. Right. Blueprint read only. Uh, I guess I could do blue. What, okay, what does visible instance only mean? I know they explained it in the video, but I'd like to. Make it this property only visible in property windows for instances. For archetypes, it cannot be edited. This specifier is incompatible with any of the edit specifiers. Okay. Well, blueprint read only is not an edit one, right? So I could put blueprint read only. Okay. Blueprint read only. Edit anywhere is edit anywhere, right? Property windows, one archetypes, and it's specifiers are incompatible with any of the visible specifiers. Mm. 
Yeah, get hub widget. Okay. There we go. Then it's asking us to remove from parent. Sounds like the clone high Gandhi line. Say what? Access the HUD being used by the player and remove it from the viewport when quitting the game. On the event graph, the player controller uses the shift show mouse. Oh, that's why they put it below. Yeah. Mouse cursor. Bud. Open main. Okay. That makes sense. Content browser, open the first person character blueprint. God damn it. The graph for the blueprint for the gunship. Let's see. M key event and a create widget node. Promote the return value to a variable. While we use the M key as our input for bringing up the pause menu, you can use any key you wish. For the promoted variable, we calls on variable pause menu reference. The story reference to create a pause menu. Okay. Control. to pause menu. I can probably do this in blueprints. Just pull up the pause menu. Two viewfinders. I don't think that's right. Something a little goofy there. Okay, what did that want me to do? An M key event. Great widget node. And key.
So small. Here we go. Put this in here. If this is valid, pause menu reference, then uh, it's if you open it. If it's not valid, then you have to create it. Okay, let me set show mouse. Center. Set to true. Set. UI only. Okay. M is pressed. Pause menu has been accessed before. No need to create again. Instead, access the variable. This is the first time the pause menu has been accessed. I'll create it and store it. So I access it later. In either case, the input mode is set to UI only before we display the pause menu. Which we'll do next. Off the pause menu reference variable add. Uh, use the add to viewport node. The game pause to true. There we go. And set game paused. True. Okay. So now we have custom code written or blueprinted to Pause the game. Awesome. This probably could be rewritten in C++, but I'm going to say this is alright as blueprints. Not terribly relevant to the operation of the game itself, and it's not going to take up that much processing power in the back end, I presume. Compile and save. Play button in the editor. Okay, but what about the HUD? Well, Target is BP pause menu. Doesn't this not remove the HUD if it's here? Or if it's attached, I guess if it's attached to the player, then it should get removed if you quit out. Well, let's find out. This won't work on firing range, but we know that. Play game. Go through this. Let's 
load time is really screwing me out. The camera angle locked. There we go. Alright. Paused. Resume. Okay, it doesn't remove that, but that's fine. We quit. Ah, okay, that does get rid of that. Okay, cool. We've got ourselves a little working UI here. Okay, yeah, 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 yeah. Close and reopen it. So we again we want to get this working on other level. We will have to switch over to the Blueprint version. Let us place this with our blueprint version. There we go, big boy. Where's the camera? Ah, here's the camera. For some reason it's squished as all hell, but go off. Okay. And the spline. Where's the spline? There it is, at the origin. Large roll and scale. Line generation panel. Circle generated. Where's the next one? Undo the spline generation. Nope. How do I unfuck this?
There we go. Select all. There we go. Nope. E. Whoa! That's funky. That's super cool, but not at all what I want. So, no. Uh, also, why am I back to one? Deleted the whole thing. Oops. One more time. Oopsie. And in fact, doopsie. <sighs> Massive oopsies. Points three. First direction. If enabled, will start the shape tangent to the current path. Eh, whatever. How to add the shape to the selection. Thirty. Thirty. Act them. I don't know how this thing handles circle generation, but for some reason, I have three separate spline points. If I One, two, three. No, this fucking, this affects that. That's so weird. Okay. What if I didn't need it to be all three? It's separated. I just deleted that one. Could you connect? No? Control C doesn't do anything either. Okay. I guess we're just gonna be stuck with that weird ass. Give it more. I could give it more points, I guess. Uh, 
trying to just make a circle with a curved edge so that the you know thing's supposed to lean in towards its targets so you can shoot down at them. But for some reason, when I want to do that, I say create a circle, and then I display the roll and scale. So it's like Or two things now. What is this? This generation system is busted as all hell. Now it's making two circles. Why? Why are you doing this? Why are you fucking with me like this? I just, I just want to make a ship. And I just want to say, hey ship, make a spline path. Say, hey spline path. Make a circle. A single point. Make a circle. Visualize from one scale. Okay, cool. What is that? What is this? Why is there another one? Get out of here. Am I generating multiple ones by accident? What is this? Why are there five billion? How do I see how many points are on this fucking thing? Drag select. Is there no way to do that? Now there's things over here again. What is happening? I'm 
what is going on? It's just making new ones. What the fuck? Why? I just wanted to make a circle! Why can't it make a circle? Oh god, okay. One more time. Gunship, place. Move. Point type. One generation. Circle. Sure. Two thousand. What is this? I... <sighs> UE5, spline, generation, friggin, uh, curvature, Broken. I'm saying splines, populating meshes, no. No idea. Now it's like curved into this weirdly. Why is it doing that? Oh, this is all all fucked up. How do we, how do we save this? It just disconnects it. How do I do that? Okay. <laughs> Sorry. This should not have been this much of an issue. I don't know why. The splines are just broken. Are what they are. Can I just make a circle? No? Okay. One generation. Circle.
I've still got four points because this last one's not the same. And that. It just strains out here for some reason. But whatever, I don't care. I just want this to be done at this point. Select all splines. That's a big enough circle going around the main points. Shoot down at them. Uh, what's this? Shoot your projectile. We got the explosion back as well. Let's see. Launch. Yes. Ammo, one of the one. It's also too low. I hit him with the explosion, so that's fine. Oops. Not the easy. M key. Right. There we go. Yep. All right. Cool. Whoosh. Whoosh. Wait, no, this is a problem. I don't have control. Hmm. Now it's back. Oh, probably because level one just goes back to... Um... Uh, it goes back to level or firing range, and it's not part of the registered process. But if I quit and play, no. Okay, so that's a bug. If I quit out and then go back in, it doesn't pass the control back. So why is that? Oh, hey, the board. Um, why would that be? Why would that be? There's something we're probably missing here. Play button, open firing range, and some parent. Reading main menu. We skip something here. No. Turn 
button and give play. Ah, okay, this is what we skipped over before. So, set input mode game only. Why would we do that in code? E5 CP set input mode. Yeah, that's for the blueprint API. I said CPP. Motherfucker. Create instance one of those two classes. So that's the instance the way you want it, which is focus, etc. Make sure this is it's for Liz as long as you want the mode to be active. Globals, remember sphere player, whatever. Command line and blueprint callers for this function that you can read through more examples. Okay. Let me just do that. Does this work? No. Blueprint library. Key controller. What is this? It's in the C plus space. You get controller. Controller set input mode. Game play status. What do you need to include to be able to use gameplay statics?
Some player control is found while iterating through local and available notes. Play your controllers. Okay. Include this. Set input mode. F input mode do not play. Type name is not allowed. Did I miss something? did it here before. It wasn't working. Probably because I didn't have the get player controller set up. I think that should do it. Let's see. Put like Yeah. Okay. Now we can do this. And we'll try feeding the next level again. It goes back. I don't actually know what'll happen here, because this the level swapping between firing range and one is done programmatically, but Yes. Oh, well, that's all good. And I can still pause, and resume, quit. All right, cool. We've got ourselves a functioning game loop. So I'll take that as an absolute win for today. Let's quit out. Uh, and I think that'll do it for today's stream. I know we didn't do the, the full five hours, but I think it's mission accomplished. I think for next time, now that I'm thinking about the concept of, you know, having reload timers on these different weapons, I might want to start 
toying with implementing the different types of weapons that the, the gunship will have. Um, just make a couple variations and, uh, you know, make sure they're all workable. Um, so, yeah. And you got something for next week as well. But, uh... I think that'll do it for today's stream. Thank you guys so much for watching. Hope you enjoyed all that content. Let me close this up. And I'll put this up on GitHub later. But for now, just make sure all that shuts down cleanly. You're good. And put you on camera focus. Let's see who we can raid right now. Is oh, is he finally done? No way. People had to fuck with him, right? There's a streamer I follow, Mr. Too Bold. He's been doing a subathon. It looks like he might finally be done. Nope. No, he's not. Never mind. He's still there. Well, I will send you over his way. Uh, and Lord, he needs the support. He's been going at this for over a week now. God bless his soul. But I will send you there. And, uh, yeah. Thank you guys so much for watching. Stay safe out there. And until next time, uh, peace out.